Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ramadan Journey. I am your host, Afif Khan, and we are accompanied we are accompanied on our journey as usual by Imam Muhammad al Asi. He is the author of the Ascendant Quran. Uh, currently, we are focusing on Volume Six, uh, the subject of women. Uh, today's discussion uh, will conclude the programs that are related to the rights and responsibilities of women. Uh, in this particular program, we're going to talk about domestic violence. Uh, domestic violence uh, is a problem that transcends history, culture, geography, ethnicity. Uh, it's a worldwide problem. And because it's a worldwide problem, obviously Muslim societies are not immune. Uh, in fact, uh, in Muslim countries, the problem is exacerbated by the fact that uh, there is an overwhelming ambiance of government oppression and injustice. Uh, in fact, uh, as far as Muslim societies are concerned, uh, there are many, uh, both men and women alike, who feel that the Qur'an gives men the license to beat, to abuse, uh, and to strike their wives uh, and their women folk. And so we're going to uh, talk about this particular issue and we're going to ask uh, Imam al-Asi to expand uh, on the guidance that we receive in the Qur'an. Uh, Imam al-Asi, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, the ayat in Surah An-Nisa, the relevant ayat that correspond uh, to this particular issue are the 34th and 35th ayat of Surah An-Nisa. Uh, in these ayat, men have been given uh, uh, the responsibility to correct failing relationships. Uh, could you uh, help us better understand these ayat, and in particular, uh, the two words that are in the ayat, nushuzuhunna uh, and wadribuhunna? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen. Rahmatillahi lil Alameen. Al Bashir al Nadir. Yes, there's a lot of commotion, um, especially by um, certain quarters uh, when it comes to the treatment of wives in an Islamic family. Uh, one of the most frequently cited uh, ayah or verse in the Qur'an which has the word فَضْرِبُوهُنَّ in it has become one of these battering sticks that is used by uh, detractors and enemies of the Muslims to defame Islam and to describe family life in Islam, especially as it pertains to the wife, as being a hellhole of sorts. Uh, in order for us, I'll get to the uh, wording of the ayah, uh, I'll zero in on that, but before I do that, it's very necessary to explain the relationship between husband and wife. The relationship between husband and wife is a relationship of compassion and affection and intimacy and care for each other. And this goes in both directions. Uh, an ayah in the Quran, I believe in Surah Al Hajj, it says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً One of the expressions or illustrations of Allah's authority and power is that He rendered the relationship between couples, husband and wife, one of mawadda and rahma. Mawadda is the, um, is the yearning to share the emotions between the husband and the wife. 
And rahma is the benevolence and the compassion that is built into this relationship. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً That defines, in broad terms, the um, very close and very careful relationship between husband and wife. Uh, there are other ayat in the Qur'an, of course, and there's no time to, to go into those other ayat. But just to set the stage for uh, speaking about the ayah that we are concerned with uh, around ayah 34 in Surah An-Nisa. Uh, the sentence in that ayah that has become a matter of give and take and back and forth and accusations and counter accusations and Muslims sometimes taking a defensive position, you know, the this type of thing. This ayah speaks also about, because as I just said in trying to describe the general and the recommended and the sought after relationship between husband and wife, a relationship of love and compassion, a relationship of sharing and uh, exchanging feelings, this relationship, because life being what it is, there's pressure that comes to bear on the family. It could be financial pressure, it could be psychological pressure, it could be a number of other issues that strain the marital relationship between husband and wife. So uh, when that happens, at times, uh, the wife uh, begins to show a type of infraction in the just described relationship between husband and wife. When there is the share of love, when there is the share of compassion, when there is the share of grace between them. Uh, if the wife begins to distance herself from the husband uh, and that, emo that strong emotional tie begins to fray, uh, she more or less begins to uh, um, declare a type of independence. And I don't mean it in the in the positive sense, I mean it uh, in the uh, irredentist sense, a breakaway sense. So when that happens, uh, there is a type of solution to that. Okay. And uh, with that introduction, uh, we'll come back and try to understand the wording of the ayah a little bit better. Uh, at this time, uh, please take this break with us uh, for our sponsors. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, the wording in this particular ayah. Uh, we received an introduction about the ayah in the last segment. And so now we'll discuss uh, the exact wording of the ayah. Okay, so the sentence in the ayah that we are speaking about is nushuzahunna," And those of you who fear their, their here is in reference to the wives, nushuzahunna, their breakaway, they're, they're breaking away here from the trust that the husbands have in them. This is very important to, to uh, bear in mind. Uh, in other words, there's, it's on the verge of infidelity, husband and wife relationship. Uh, and it's going in that direction. And the husband detects this. So when, when the husband detects something like this is begin to happen, then the first step is the wav. He counsels his wife, he sits, 
He speaks to her in the best possible way with all of the concern and the compassion that is involved and, and wants her more or less back into his emotional sphere and not to wander off into uh, areas and territories that are going to harm that relationship. Fa'iduhunna, that's the first step. The second step, if she doesn't respond, she still has that you know, inclination away from him. The second step is فَهْجُرُوهُنَّ فِي الْمَضَاجَةِ You abandon them in the sleeping, in, in, in the bed. You abandon them in bed. Meaning that you don't have any intimate relations. That's right. Of course, you can physically be in bed, but you don't uh, come close to each other and, um, and express yourselves. So, what, uh, and the husband does that. These are instructions here. Eh? So here there's a distance, a, 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 an emotional distance. This is the beginning of the true emotional distance uh, between husband and wife to, to, to try to uh, detect how far this breakaway attitude may go by the wife. So what, and, and then if, and it, might, it might, everything may be solved right here and that's, it's finished. But if it's not solved and still the wife is in a mode of abandoning her emotional and confidence relationship with her husband. Uh, so uh, if this pursues and it goes on, then the step is فَضْرِبُوهُنَّ This is where a lot of controversy has uh, originated. Uh, and the literal translation of the word فَضْرِبُوهُنَّ word, is hit them or strike them. And there have been many interpreters, and once again, we find that there's a relationship between the internal Islamic relative ignorance and the external anti-Islamic uh, consummating animosity. So, uh, those who said that the word فَضْرِبُوهُنَّ means hit them, uh, they conditioned that with many conditions. So before people uh, jump the gun and begin accusing Muslims, let them read in the details that if that is how a person understands it, there's a lot of limitations and conditions and restrictions placed on this. It cannot be with an object that harms the body. There cannot be any uh, uh, physical uh, scars on the body. Uh, it is not meant to uh, be painful uh, to the wife. Uh, the instrument that is used is something like a uh, toothbrush. Um, and so what it, what in, in this instance, what uh, hitting, quote-unquote, or striking, quote-unquote, would mean is, like, is synonymous with a mother spanking her naughty child. The mother never intends to hurt the child or to uh, inflict any type of psychological or physical damage. It's just a, a, a corrective measure that is done out of the compassion and the love that is there. So, so, so the husband is sending a message, but he's not abusing. That's right. There's no abuse in this whatsoever uh, for those who accept that type of uh, explanation for the word فَضْرِبُوهُنَّ I personally settle, and because of the word daraba has a range of meanings. It, it, used by itself, daraba in the Arabic language, uh, the, the meanings may be in the dozens. Uh, but then there are other meanings to the word when it is followed by a preposition, and those could be several meanings. So out of this uh, range of meanings, uh, yours truly here felt comfortable with the word jolt. At this point, the, husband, uh, the husband's uh, task is to try to jolt his wife back into that binding and that reciprocal uh, relationship of uh, exchange of the deepest feelings in human nature. 
Um, so this is um, the, uh, the spectrum in which the word varaba uh, functions in. Uh, so once again, to, to recap, uh, the ayah says, وَلَّاتِي تَخَافُونَ نُشُوزَهُنَّ فَعِذُوهُنَّ So the first one is to give advice and to try to be work this thing out verbally. So, so, so it's, it's the husband that's been given the responsibility to try to initiate a correction of a relationship which is on the verge of failing. That's right. Right, and so he, he's been given basically a program that you go through certain steps. Okay, if none of these steps work, you know, you go all the way to Fadri uh, Buhuna, if none of that works, what happens? Well, then from there on, it, it, it moves in the area of divorce. Okay. And then, you know, there are procedures for that, uh, like bringing uh, arbiters from both sides of the family, from the husband's side and then from the wife's side. And if that works, and they, because this is another way of, you see, in, in the ayah when it says, Fahjuruhunna, and then it says, Fadribuhunna. I think we'll get to the uh, other meaning f of Fadribuhunna. Yes, yeah, there's, there's a type of opposites here at work. Okay, so we'll, we'll get into that in the next segment. Uh, please stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome Ramadan. Welcome Ramadan. And welcome back. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, the word Fadri Buhunna. Um, there's an alternate explanation uh, to this word which uh, probably hasn't made it into tafsir literature. And so we're going to explore uh, uh, these alternate ex explanations of the word. Yes, uh, there is uh, one of the meanings of Baraba is actually applied to the animal kingdom. It's used when uh, a male and a female animal um, copulate when they come together. Right. No, no one, in, in, in reference to intercourse, no one says that uh, a donkey marries a donkey. Right, and we don't talk about intimacy between animals, right? We talk That's about right. uh, just the sexual act. Just the physical, you yeah. know, discharge of the urge. So um, in that setting, the word in Arabic is, the noun is dirab. So now, we're, uh, we're not saying that we humans are animals. That's clear that we are human beings and we have uh, the developed and the refined sense of relationships between husband and wife that we have as a species. Yeah, so in a sense you're saying that sexual intimacy is not only physical, but in human beings it's also emotional and psychological. It's a lot more than just the physical act. That's right. But here, when, when we're trailing the developments, the negative developments between husband and wife, those binding emotions have frayed to the extent that if right now there's a chill, an absolute icy relationship between husband and wife. So when that happens and... Uh, they both are told to have that intimate relationship again. The usual word that would be used here would have been nikah, fanki. So the, the ayah would have read like this. And then it would have been wankihuhunna. But because there's no longer the elements of nikah in this, the psychological, the emotional depth of intimacy, all of these are absent now. So if they're going to rejoin themselves in the sexual act, 
it would be similar to animals that get together. So, so in this regard, فَضْرِبُوهُنَّ means to have that sexual act again. But under these new conditions, due to which we cannot use the word فَنْكِحُوهُنَّ Right. And, and, and the reason for it is to explore uh, whether you still have that emotional bond left and whether the ma marriage is salvageable. Exactly. This is the only way that it becomes possible for both husband and wife to see whether there still is a chance uh, uh, for this marriage coming back together again uh, because by probing the depth of their internal feelings when they are together, they will realize whether this is a marriage that can be worked out and we still can put the pieces back together, or after going through this intimate act, also realizing when there's supposed to be warmth that there's no longer even warmth in this moment in life, so it becomes like you know, we can't put this thing back together again. And then it's just, you take the final step. Yeah, then, then you go, go in the direction of, uh, you know, the divorce procedure and all of this other. And th that is a, another subject altogether of, on its own. Uh, uh, could you talk about uh, the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam insofar as the relationship that he had uh, with the intimate members of his family? Well, yes, you know, the Prophet married... Uh, nine times in his life and um, he also divorced uh, he also had a family right, and he was uh, he was characterized as a walking Quran he, he was an uh, example of the Quran that's right the Quran in flesh so to speak right. uh, and in any reference book you want, go back to history books, sira books, sunnah books, fiqhi books, whatever. When, when these books speak about the Prophet's life, there's not one citation that I've come across, I mean I'm a human being, I'm subject to correction, but as far as I know there's not one instance in which the Prophet is reported to have um, uh, hit any of his wives, or any of his family members. Uh, and being that the Prophet is our point of reference in this, he's the uh, prototype of how our behavior and our demeanor should be in family life and in other uh, spheres of life. Uh, there is therefore a reflection of the Prophet's lifestyle that tells us there's no, there's no hitting in the family. So therefore, uh, the, the evidence here tilts in the direction of excluding the very same argument that the detractors and the, uh, the defamers of Islam make, and that is, look at, the, look at Muslim husbands, look at how they behave, they hit their wives and they abuse their wives, w which I, I have to say this, in some uh, Islamic subcultures, this exists, but we can't judge Islam because of the errant or the deviant behavior of some individuals. Make the distinction between the two and don't tell us Islam is this because of some wrong behavior. We will tell you that wrong behavior is wrong because Islam is such and such. Because Islam says it's wrong. Yeah. Uh, that concludes our discussion uh, on the subject of women. Uh, in the following programs, we are going to go on to other topics. Uh, we do thank you for joining in with us today, and we hope you tune in again tomorrow, same channel, same time. Uh, I am your host, Afif Khan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.